broken play episode, man. Fresh off of the national championship. We got Reggie Ball in the building. Yes, sir. We here, bro. We here. We here. After the NCAA championship, this man called it just like it was. I said, we got to get him on the show. He called it the play. Did you say the play of the century? No, nah, play of the month. Oh, play the, the play month. of the month. <laughs> and today is January the goddamn 9th. <laughs> he said this on the 8th. It's 20. I'm acting like that nigga on the thug case. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, had, you saw when they asked him, how old was you in middle school? <laughs> it's 23 days now. <laughs> Man, we got Manny Cortez in the building, man. What's up, man? Yeah. If you know anything about sports betting, you got to know Manny, man. Manny, how did you know Michigan Moneyline was just automatic? Well, good question, man. Um, very, very good question. So, the that game was very tricky, man, because mm-hmm. it, it was a lot of line movement, mm-hmm. right? So, if you're a sports better, you pay attention to the line, right? So, if you look like last week, they had a uh, Washington money line at plus 170. They had Michigan money line at minus 180. Mm-hmm. Right? So minus 180 meaning that you have to bet $180 just to win $100. Well, prior to the game, the line went from minus 180 to minus 210. Sure. Right? So that's a huge that's yeah. a huge that's a jump. huge gap. Yeah. Right. And when I was looking at the public money, I'm like, look, a lot of people are on Washington. About 62% of the public is on Washington. Also, 60% of the public money is on Washington as well, but yet the books have Michigan so juiced. So when I see a line movement like that, it tells me, it, 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 here's what it tells me. It tells me that Vegas strongly believe that Michigan is going to win this game mm. because for them to take the line from minus 170 to minus 210. To go up and then and everybody right. bet with every, Washington. Exactly. Yeah. It's just common sense. I'm like, it makes no sense. If anything, they would have lowered the juice, but instead mm-hmm. they up it. And I was like, well, okay. Well, I know Michigan has a, a, a better defense. Washington haven't faced a defense like <laughs> Michigan. You got to pay attention Thanks. to that. True. Then when I also went back to look, I was looking at all the games that Washington won, and they won a lot of close games. Mm -hmm. If I'm keeping a P with you, they won about five games that was decided by less than a touchdown. Right? That's a very, you know, if you if you look at their record, it could have easily been, you know, 10 and 4 Mm -hmm. or 12 and 2, right? Right. So they've been playing great. You know, they beat they beat Oregon twice. Even on that Texas game. How they Even came on the Texas down game. To, if Texas mm-hmm. make that catch, it's a whole different it's, game. It's a whole different game, right? So I was like, you know, Washington has all these things going for them. But the deciding factor for me going with Michigan money line first half, I felt like Michigan was the better team. They were going to come out and prove a point. And they did that with the run in the first half. Bro. Them boys was running with a Edwards, purpose. Edwards. Right? Crazy. So I was like, you know, Washington spread is plus four and a half. I think this game is going to be a blowout. But... Just to be safe, I'm going to go with Michigan first half because if Washington have a chance of winning this game, it's going to be, it's going to be a run in from, a, in, in, from, from coming from behind, right? So I felt like the best play possible was playing uh, Michigan minus 165 first half. So we had over 90 plus people on the exclusive yesterday. So I saw that play for 500. So we had about 90 plus people on the play yesterday. And my guy Chad, Wait, what is uh, Chad hit me up, right? He was like, yo, what's good? I'm trying to bet 5K. I was like, he was like, how much do you love to play? I was like, bro, it's the play of the month, bro. Come on. Mm, so, you know. But you said you sold that play for 500? I sell, I sell my exclusive for 500 mm-hmm. every day. And you said 90 people? Yeah, we had 90 people on the exclusive. On a Monday. But see, <laughs> now, 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 yo, it's Nav Green back again from Broken Play. You know why I'm here. Talk about prize pick, man. It's wild card weekend. Hey, ain't nothing wild about the deals they got. If you type in broken play, they're going to match up whatever you put up. If you put up $63, that's all you got left. Holidays, been kicking your ass. Get what? They're going to match $63. You can't beat that anywhere else. Wild card weekend, we got the Cleveland Browns versus the Houston Texans. I'm telling you right here, off top, take C.J. Stroud for more. I know the Browns got a good defense, but I'm willing to go with C.J. Stroud with the more. I don't care what they put it at. C.J. Stroud is a winner. Uh, you got the B, uh, you got the Bills versus Steelers. Huh? I'll take James Cook 
with the run. And I feel like that's going to be a running game, you know what I mean, the trenches, defense versus defense. So I'll probably put a lot of people with less. They ain't going to be passing a lot of yards. It all depends. But this going to be the game to see. Kansas City versus the Dolphins. Tyreek back at Arrowhead. It's going to be cold. Take him for the less. Take him for the less. But look, I'm just if you don't believe me, do what you think. Because you got up to six. If you do six, more or less, you can win up to 25 times your money. Listen to me. Six picks, 25 times your money. And don't be like me. Being one short will make you start contemplating your whole day. If you're if you going to always be one short, just do five, just do four, or just do three. But if you want that money, like I do, and it's wild card weekend, go do six, get 25 times your money, and come sip 1942 with the Broken Play crew. <laughs> not, not to put many business out. But that ain't, that's just him, like, doing that. That's extra money. He put a... This is what make me believe, because you will see him put his own 100000 up. It's different if somebody just selling plays and you don't see them bet that shit. <laughs> he show you, I done better than 100000 on it. I'm sure of it. And then, do you not... You have a set amount that you send it to because you don't want to mess up the lines yourself, huh? Well, mm. so here's the thing, right? If you if you if you bet in that much at a at a, a sports number one, you, it all depends on the sports book you go to. Mm -hmm. So if I'm betting that amount of money, um, if I don't go to a sports book, I have to spread it out, right? So I have about five to six different accounts, right? I have a FanDuel account, I have a DraftKings account, I have a Bovada, I have a BetMGM, I have a my bookie. So <laughs> if, when I'm betting something that heavy, Thanos. and I'm when I'm betting something that heavy and I'm not able to go to a casino, I have to like spread it out. So mm -hmm. I might bet 10 over here, 15 over here, because one, you know, my bookie is not going to let me bet 100K. Mm -hmm. uh, FanDuel is not going to let me bet 100K. Because once they look at your profile and they see that you're a profitable gambler, they're going to limit you, mm -hmm. right? So when mm -hmm. they limit you, that means, because you got to understand the sports books is like a business, right? It's all about P&L, profit and loss. Think about your sports book, right? And you have this one nigga who come in every week. He's just smacking the fuck out of you. He's betting 10K <laughs> for seven days. And every week, he's going like 5-2, and 7-0, and 6-1. Oh, and, and he's cracking your head for three weeks straight. And you look at your p and you're like, damn, I'm not profiting with this motherfucker. I bet. You want me to take your bet? You're not going to be able to bet 10K. Mm -hmm. I can only take 1,000. That is you That's as a crazy. business making a sound business decision, right? So a lot of these dudes who be sports betting and trying to sell, and this is not no diss or whatever, no, right? No, no. If, even if I'm like, talk I'm like, shit. look, if <laughs> you're as profitable as you're saying, or you you doing all this, you I'm can't bet that you, on that you, site. You yeah. will be limited, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I can show you on the Hard Rock sports book. I even posted on my story. Um, so I went in Miami. I had like five k in the account. Um, I ran that five k all the way up to about ninety eight thousand before I cash out. Um, I even have the reel on my story where it went from 5K to 50K. And it's literally, if you go on my Instagram right now, you're going to see the reel where I show you all my wins from 5K and exactly how I was betting. Um, but I'm saying this to say after I was able to bet on Hard Rock, after a week and a half, two weeks, they limited me. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to bet 20K. The most I was able to bet on the game was 15, 1500, 2500, and things mm. of that nature, right? So when it get like that, you really like get off the site. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no pointless. need for you. Yeah. So I try to I try to withdraw my money from Hard Rock Sportsbook, uh, ninety eight thousand dollars, and it was complicated. They weren't trying to pay my money. Um, I made a video about them on Instagram. I had to threaten them that I was going to get my lawyer involved, um, and also go to my local news station in Miami <laughs> so they can cover a story on it because y'all are a brand new sportsbook. You have only been operating in Florida for about a month. You don't want a story to come out that you don't want to pay a, a, a better, you know, what mm -hmm. they want. Um, so, you know, it was a back and forth in email. They sent my money over via wire, and I was like, I'm done with them. For sure, you got to be. You don't play. So, you, do you realize, like, you like a underground legend? When did you know, like, all right, I'm out here? Um, I would say, bro, it, it's... I never really paid attention to it, but I would say I started to notice, bro, like, when I when I go to certain cities... And I go to the casinos and sports book and people start to recognize. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit, damn. Like people really, yeah. you feel me? And they start. Cause after a win, you kick your shit. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I pop win. my yeah. shit. I, do, I <laughs> pop my that's shit. Why, that's why I can't. But see, I don't know if it's just us, like, you know, like, you know, being 
in Atlanta or something like that. Bro, I don't even have to know a person, but I like people who pop shit. Like, yeah. on some, <laughs> like, not, I don't know how to explain it, but they like, yeah, pop that shit on their ass. Even though, but you know how, like, you have some people, they, they, want, they don't want to see you win. Yeah. And that's something that's something that I deal with, man. See, uh, when I first started, bro, number one, I tell people this all the time, bro. It's all about confidence, bro. Whatever it is you do in life, if you want to be successful, you, you want to be in that top 1%, you have to have confidence. You have to have confidence sure. in your craft. You got to have confidence in yourself. So when I'm popping my shit, it's really just me just motivating myself, letting myself know, hey, I'm the best at this shit. I put in the work, mm. effort, hard work. Like, I study this shit to How the How you fullest. just broke down that Michigan-Washington game, that let me... Let me know you ain't just make a rash decision. Oh, no, like, yeah, bro. Yeah. Because also at the same time, too, bro, um, with what I do, like I'm playing with people money, too, right? If somebody coming to me and they paying me $500 for a play, my job is to give them the best play possible because I understand, number one, 500 that's a lot of money. Right? And then what if you give me 500 for the play, what you going to put up? Exactly. So most people usually, I tell people, if you're paying 500 you want to bet at least 1500 Mm -hmm. All right, you want to bet at least fifteen hundred, and you know some people complain about it. And I just tell them, I look, it's not for you. You feel Thank me? You. Like you <laughs> yes. can either eat Ruth Chris or you can eat McDonald's. You dig what I'm saying? You yeah. can either shop at Ross or you can go to Louis V, uh, LV. You can go to Louis V. You can go to you know Celine wherever. Hopefully, when they do that, that first one be a win. Cause oh if, yeah, yeah, yeah. If that first one be a loss, it, it, it can leave. It can, <laughs> leave, it can <laughs> leave a bad taste. But I would say this though, it um, can be a looking for many episodes, man. But I, I would say this though, um, you know, my team. We, we, we do a great job, bro. If if it's somebody first time on, on my exclusive, bro, mm -hmm. and we lose, bro, nine times out of ten, I take care of them. Just, well, as a business right. owner, bro. as a business owner, I feel bad, right? Like sure. I don't I don't want your first experience uh with me is an L. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying now? Now where I where I kind of be like, hey bro, you gotta pay again. Let's say, for example, we won because we go on win streak. Yeah, for sure. Right? That's how we build up. We might go on a 10 game win streak. A five game win streak, we might go 15 and two. So let's say, for example, if we won three, four in a row and we lost the fifth, and you like, bro, let me get. I was like, bro, no, I just made on, you a ton of money. Yeah. Like, yeah, I can't get you. You feel me, bro? I got it. I got it. But that fifth game, end. that's when he, oh, we on the road. But listen, I'm finna bet 10. That's where yeah. niggas <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. That's yeah. where niggas <laughs> fucked up. And that's where bankroll management come into play, bro. Cause look, I got this one guy, right? I think he's in Dubai or shit, bro. He's worth like a couple of mil. Um, he's do he's in the cell phone business, right? Mm -hmm. So he hit me up. He's one of my good clients or whatever. Um, he hit me up when he wanna, you know, run up. Mm -hmm. So and when he's betting, he's usually betting 15, 20k. So, you know, that's what you call a will, right? He's a will better, like he's a heavy shark. So he bought my plays for 500 and we went on a crazy run, bro. We went on like a 10 0 run, right? And he was betting like 15k minimum, right? Mm -hmm. So he would bet 15, win 25, 15, win 30, and he's stacking up. And every night. Bro, you the goat. Bro, you the goat. F and B. F you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> on on the on the eleventh play, bro. On the eleventh play, this man hit me up. He was like, bro, I feel really good, bro. I'm about to go heavy tonight. I was like, bro, just keep betting what you was betting. Yeah. And I left it like that, right? Because if you if you take a loss, it ain't no big loss. Cause, right. Cause nigga, this nigga better the hundred k. He was like, he was trying to bet a hundred k lightning, right? This nigga better the hundred k on the eleventh play. And he literally lost like 80% of his bankroll. So everything that we won from like the last 10 days. Don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. And I was like, bro, why would you do that? He was like, yeah, man, you know, I really felt good. I'm like, bro, we on a 10 game win streak. It's all about odds and probability because you, you understand we're going to go on runs and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But also understand when it comes to sports betting, the team that's supposed to win doesn't always win. Right. Mm. You feel me? You got to understand that. And that's why it's important when you gambling to have your money you know, structure in a system, mm -hmm. right? You got to have discipline. I tell people, if you have a, if you really want to know if you're profitable from sports betting, here's what you need to do, right? This is how you know if you can sustain making money, a passive income. Nigga, I'm listening. Here's what you have, <laughs> right? Shit. I'm locked in. So look, I'm going to, I'm going to use a, a, a I'm going to use a, a even number, right? Let's say you have $30,000 that you want to play with and you want to gamble with, right? You got 30 days in a month, right? 30 days, 30 plays, meaning that you're doing one play per day, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're doing one play per day, you're able to find the best play possible that's on the market, right? Because you're going to do your research and things of that nature. Bet one play every day. If you have 30K, bet one play every day for $1,000. After 30 days, look at your record. You might go 20 and 10. You might go 25 and 5. 
you might go 15 and 15, but you are able to analyze your overall work because you have enough data from betting over 30 days to see if you're profitable. Mm. But a lot of people are not going to take the time to do that because people get greedy. They get quick. Like, yeah. yeah. You gotta treat, and right you got to start chasing. Yeah. You you start right chasing. You got, you, got treat, you got to treat it like a business, bro. You got to treat it like a business. You dig what I'm saying? Like, you really got to treat this gambling stuff like a business if you really want to be profitable from it. And I promise you, anybody that bet for 30 days straight and just one play, you're going to win more than you lose. Mm -hmm. Sports betting makes the least Because you're going to sit down and take time. Exactly. You're going to yeah. sit down, take time, and well, this, have really this for me. superior confidence. <laughs> this is for me. Sports betting make the least amount of money in Vegas. It's the least It's the least profitable business in Vegas. Did you know that? No, Vegas I didn't know that. Nobody, nobody no. knew that. Sports Shit, I'm thinking Vegas the, the one who wins. No. So look, tell me this, man. Not to interrupt. Yes. How you, but you remember those Monday night games when the underdogs were losing like that. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like everybody else was going with the other team. The Vegas not losing. Well, he, he, here here's the thing, man. Um, when it comes to and I, I can speak on this for days, man. So certain sports, you have to look at certain things when you're betting, right? Mm -hmm. NFL, you have to look at certain things. College uh, football, basketball, NBA, you have to look at certain things, right? So here's something I'm going to tell you about NFL, right? And a lot of people don't know this, right? So with NFL, teams that go into the fourth quarter losing wins the game 46% of the time. Look it up. That means that if a team is losing, I'm listening. And they're going into the fourth quarter, they win the game 46% of the time. Right? Mm -hmm. That's just a statistic right there. Also, NFL, when you look at the margin of victory, is usually less than a touchdown. If you look at the average margin of victory for every NFL game for the whole season, the average meaning that how many points did the, the team win by is mm -hmm. less than a touchdown. Right? Meaning that... Uh, NFL games are literally games of, you know, possessions, right? Teams right. that usually have the ball at the end usually wins the game right. more than 50% of the time, right? So when you understand those numbers and you see those huge line on, on Monday Night Football, everybody's looking at the big names. You have to understand when guys are on that football field, it's a pride thing. I don't give a fuck if I'm a 14 points underdog or whatever. Guys step on that field. It's a pride thing. It's a prime time it, game. It's a prime time game. You feel me? So when you when you bet in the the favorites on those huge spreads, you got to be very careful because um, sometimes it might be a blowout or sometimes the underdog wins. Mm -hmm. Those big spreads game here is how I like to play it. Right? I don't like playing those big spreads because the spread is big for a reason. It could be a blowout or it could be close. The line that I like to play on those type of games, I like to play the over and under. Mm -hmm. Right? Meaning that. How many total points is going to be scored, right? If I feel like an underdog has a chance of winning the game, I will be more enticed to play the over because I know if an underdog is going to beat a good team, they're going to have to have a good game on offense too. And the books aren't accounting for them to have a good game on offense. So if I feel like an underdog is going to beat a good team, I'm expecting the underdog to at least be able to put points on the board. I know what the good team is going to do, sure. but I'm expecting it to be a little bit of a high-scoring game, especially if I'm thinking that the plus is going to win the game. So I will look at that, and then I will also adjust the line too, bro. A lot of niggas be so focused on the payout of a play, meaning that, bro, I want a better play where if I you know, bet 1,000, it's paying me 3,000. That's where niggas be fucking yeah. up. You, you focus buy on points. By the points, yeah. you so focused on the payout, you forget to be focused on the win, bro. That's your that's the that's the number uh, number one most important thing. You winning, right? Mm -hmm. So that should be your number one focus when you when it when it comes to picking a play that you want to bet on. Is this play gonna give me a win? Don't be so focused on the payout. So tell me this: <clears throat> when we talking about this prize picks, mm -hmm. are you a fan of going doing this the flex where you do the six picks, or you you try to find two or three? Uh, okay, so I love price picks. I even have a, a sponsorship of price picks, right? Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't play, I don't play six legs. I don't play six legs. When I do price picks, I do two and I do three legs, right? Because I could tell how you were saying we we get so caught up on like the, the big payout. You see the twenty five times, and then mm -hmm. you be one short. Exactly, exactly, and that's how it be, bro. And. If everybody was betting singles, bro, Vegas would not be profitable. Mm. Like, if everybody was, 
But the problem is, people like that small, small amount, big payout. Yes, bro. But based off of odds and probability, you ne- the books is always going to win. Now, I'm not saying parlays are bad, but if you're betting parlays, you have to have a strategy. And here's the strategy if you want to bet parlays and still be profitable, right? If you have a bankroll, let's say you have $1,000, right? Here's mm-hmm. how I would play. If I have $1,000 and I want to bet parlays and um, I want to bet a single, here's what I do, right? I would take 300 I would stick it to the side for parlay. I would take $700. I would bet it on a single play. I have $300 left, right? I would take that $300. I would play three parlays. Each of them is going to be a three leg, right? So I'm going to have 100 on one three leg. That 100 on a three leg is usually about plus 450, 500. So 100 will pay you out 500, right? Mm -hmm. I will bet three different parlays. Now I have my single, which is my main play. Mm -hmm. If that $700 play cash is probably going to profit me six to 700, right? But I got parlays on the side. So if my single was to lose, my parlays are now my insurance. I have three parlays that I have to the side. So even though my and single you want to make that single a part of your parlay? No, 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 because you don't want it. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Because that'll fuck it that can up. fuck you, yeah. hey, my man. You, you, yeah, you gamble. Oh you no, know, I'm, 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 <laughs> you got to lose well, at this shit to know. Like, <laughs> you like, you like, why the fuck did I put this single? It don't fuck up yeah. my whole ticket. And then you know how you be feeling like something is a lock. Now you got it on all this shit. Oh, and, man, it don't fuck. And up it's your never whole a lock. Ticket never. Never. It's lock. never a lock. I, I will say this, Manny, uh, and Reggie probably could contest this, and Marcel. How you explain it, you very financial, like literally yes. with this shit. Like mm-hmm. you like something like I feel like you could go on a, a seminar teaching this shit from state to state. Bro, I this and I have a passion for this. That's the difference. Oh, I could tell. You feel me? Like that's <laughs> when you when you when you have a passion for put something. Put up a hundred thousand, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you got more than a passion, yeah. nigga. <laughs> you got a rabbit foot too. <laughs> But uh, when you when you have a passion for something, man, you try to you try to learn it in and out, mm-hmm. and you're able to speak on it like it's like a second a second language. Mm. Um, but I, I truly have a passion for this, bro. Um, but also finance too. You know, I treat it like a business. Um, you know, I'm very heavily involved in finance, uh, sports bet, and the stock market. It kind of have a correlation. Definitely the same. Uh, you know, no. it, it has a huge correlation. Um, because I I really started off in the stock market. It really. For real? Oh yeah, bro. At a, at a very young age, bro. But I feel like with sports, it's just more entertaining. Like, yeah, 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 it's more entertaining. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. So it, look, with it's you, a little quicker, I, too. I know you, uh, I cut you off right then, mm-hmm. but I had to ask you, so you don't get caught up in having favorite players or favorite teams? Fuck no. <laughs> Hell no. That's where a lot of niggas fucked up. <laughs> and, that emotion, bro. What? And, 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 and emotion. You're right. <laughs> niggas, niggas need to stop doing that shit, bro. Like, you in the business of making money, bro. You not, you not betting on sports because your favorite team, bro. Fuck that, bro. Like, fuck the Lakers, bro. Like, I know yeah, the, fuck the Lakers. niggas be losing what? so much bread on the Lakers. Because we love LeBron. And niggas be losing so much. Man, listen, bro. I tell niggas, LeBron is the biggest bookie in the league. Don't bet that nigga over on props, on points. Bro, LeBron is the biggest bookie in the league when it comes to playing his props. When you see LeBron props on on, on a site and it looks too good to be true, like 24 and a half, 23 and a half, you're like, oh yeah, LeBron going to hit that. It's going to give you 22. (laughs) 12 assists. 22, 12 assists. Yeah. Now I want to be a facilitator. Yeah, now game. he wanna now he's stuck at 22. Now he don't want to score no more. It's like, damn, nigga, did you know your line, nigga? Yes, like, I did. Then they'll have his line at like 28 and a half. Then you be like, nah, this nigga just had 22. He right. about to, <laughs> then you will look, you be like, what? Well, they had it at 22 and a half. Now it's at 28 and a half. That's a whole six point disparity right there. What the fuck? Too good to be true. You play the under on that shit, that nigga go for 30. Mm. So look, we saw Michigan <laughs> beat Washington. Michigan beat Washington. It wasn't mm-hmm. close. Yes. If Michigan would have played Georgia, just mm-hmm. say, you know what I'm saying, would those lines would have been affected or you would... Because truthfully, if we all sit in this room, we know, and Reggie, you said this for a while, uh-huh. Georgia is the best team in college. 100% That's I agree. Right. Yeah. So, but if Georgia played Washington, would the lines affect that or you'd be like, Georgia the best team and go with Georgia? I would have been. I would have won with Georgia probably. 100%. Yeah. So, um, when I look at how Georgia lost that game against uh, Alabama. And who did you have for that? Um, for that game, what was the call? Honestly, I don't remember. I okay. think we probably I don't I don't not sure. I have to look at uh I can actually find out. I have um I keep track of all my I stuff. I think Alabama was like plus 
five or plus. No, nah, they were definitely the underdog. Nah, Ale- Alabama, Alabama, was, Alabama was the underdog. Mm-hmm. Alabama yeah, was the underdog. Plus four, plus five. Alabama, Alabama was the half, yeah. yeah, it was around that. Alabama was the underdog that game. That was a very good game, too. Um, yeah. But I feel like that was like just one of those games where the team that's supposed to win didn't win. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You got to give uh, Alabama quarterback um, you know, props. Miro, Miro, yeah. Miro, he, he balled out that game. Mm-hmm. You got to you gotta give him props. When was that game? What, what was the date on that game? December. First week of December, ain't it? Yeah, December 5th. That's it. No, yeah. it was in December. Georgia, yeah, yeah, December, Georgia. Georgia. Championship, that's always. That's uh, when we had the New Orleans. Uh, yeah, that's the show, first uh, week of December. December. So whatever weekend that was. Yeah, December sixth. December sixth. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I don't have it over here, but yeah, um, it would have been a different game though, um, if it would have been uh, Georgia and uh, okay. Michigan, one hundred percent. So, Reg, I'm gonna ask you this: What's up? Does as Harbaugh winning a national championship? Mm-hmm. Do he leave Michigan? Try his luck in NFL, he stay in Michigan. Man, it's all about business, man. I don't I, I like him. I like the storyline in 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 creating that legacy. If you're gonna stay there, be there, and let's run it up and try to get three or four of them. I like that part. But I do understand like everybody's quick nowadays. They want the instant gratification, they want the the bang for their buck. And while they hot, they want to cash in on it. So I understand if you want to move up. To the NFL ranks and be with his brother, so I get that too. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But me personally, you know what I mean. I want, I would want to see him stay, and and see what he can do. And I mean, yeah, winning the national championship is huge. You know what I mean, especially for them. For sure. But the way they talk, you know what I mean. They supposed to be doing that year in and year out. Mm-hmm. So if you are that pr- type of program, you know what I mean. Now it's time to put that shit on display. Yeah, because they really haven't been like. A uh, winning, winning program. Only lately they've been winning. the last two years. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, but again, he has, they kept losing Ohio yeah, State. Yeah, Ohio State, mm-hmm. been yeah. Mm-hmm. but they beat him the past three years. He's been to the NFL. He's played in the NFL. He's coached the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it is a money. There's a lot of good opportunities in the NFL right now, coaching wise. Yeah, like Chargers, the business, the, bro. Um, Falcons, um, Panthers. Titans now, so we'll see. Manny, um, a lot of people don't speak on this enough. Like, it's certain plays when people do... So, say for instance, we'll use this for example, because we're talking about... They're talking about Jameis Winston right now. Mm-hmm. With him doing that at the end of the game, mm-hmm. people don't be understanding... Oh, like, man. well, the game already over with. No, some people be having the over oh, and under. Man. Some people might have a second half under. That just messed that up. So sometimes I think that's a Vegas call. Last night, I'm going to tell you this. I had, um, I'm watching the Phoenix and the Clippers. I fall asleep, though. But the second half was, uh, they had switched it from 114 and a half to 115. Total mm-hmm. points. Yeah, total points second half. half. Yeah, I fall asleep. I wake up. I go look at the play-by-play because I do the math. It's 115 on the head. I'm looking. The game not in reach. They filing it 15 seconds. Bro. I push, but I'm like, if I'm somebody who had, you know what I'm saying? Like, that wouldn't even call for. Fan, can I, t- can I tell you a story? Man, yes. Listen, listen. <laughs> I'm looking at this camera and say this, right? Guys who are heavy betting NBA understand that the over and under on NBA basketball, that's the most rigged line in NBA basketball when it comes to sports betting. Over and under is by far the most rigged line, and I have so many stories and instances and proof showing where over and under has been manipulated, meaning that it ain't happening in the natural flow of the game. Right? I believe Perfect example. Um, this happened a, a couple weeks ago. It was the game of Golden State against Portland, right? Um, Portland was at home. Portland was a huge underdog. The over and under was in. It was a high over and under, very high, very mm-hmm. high, right? They started the first half really, really slow, right? Fourth quarter came, right? It got really close. But I can tell that, you know, a lot of people had to under that game, like the the money was on. You feel me? Like the money was the money was on the over the money was on the under and they wanted it to go over. Mm-hmm. Right? A lot of money was on the under. Because Portland had a lot of people out, you know, a lot of I'm just now like, everybody that, in foul yeah, trouble yeah. all of a sudden. Listen, bro. Team foul. If you watch the last couple of minutes of that game, I'm just gonna say this. So here's what happened. Portland was down, Portland was down four, right? With 0.3 seconds left. 
you down four points with 0.3 seconds left. You got the ball all the way at your basket, right? The game is over. It's 0.3 seconds left. You're down four. You want to know what happened? Chauncey Billups, he called a timeout, right? So they can advance the ball mm-hmm. at the, the other side. And they, they tried to shoot a three at the end to make sure that the, the over covers. And it ended up being a push, right? It ended up being like it was dead on the mark. But that was just one of those instances like what are the fucking chances that the over and under for this game ended exactly on the line and they are losing by four points with .3 seconds left and you take the time to call a timeout to try to get a quick a, a, a quick basket that was going to be pointless with .3 seconds left. Mm-hmm. And when I looked at it, I was like, oh, yeah, the over uh, the over push. That's why. There that. you go. Mm-hmm. Another instance, um, it was the Pistons game. Um, and now, this is about like, you know, lines. Um, against Golden State? No, no, it was the it was the Pistons against the Nets. Oh yeah, you had you, you minus, had minus two six. niggas who shoot close to ninety percent from the free throw line. Cam Johnson, Cam oh. Johnson, and Michael Bridges, they went one for six from the free throw line at the end of the game. At the end of the game, guess what? Everybody was on the Nets to cover because the Pistons are fucking ass. They were on a minus twenty-six six and a half, game losing streak. Minus six and a half. My exclusive was on that game. I didn't play that that net six and a half was too good to be true. So I bought the points. I played minus five and a half, right? I think minus five and a half or minus five or minus four. I'm not sure. But I know I bought the points because I was like, ah, that's too good to be true. These niggas went one for six within the last 15 seconds to make sure that spread didn't cover. I got a whole video on my story um explaining it. Um it got like thousands and thousands of views. About, Cut the, about three to four hundred thousand views. And you go on Twitter, that's what everybody was talking about. Them bro, niggas win one you know, bro, no, you're not. It's 118, 112. I'm gonna tell you, 118, 112. Half yeah. a point, the half a point of killer. They always say get by the hook, but I don't buy, I don't do that shit a lot of times. Sometimes, because if I be like, I'm gonna buy a whole point, like I'm like, if I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna make it make sense. But this is the thing, I'm watching the Hawks against the Magic this the other day. Mm-hmm. Because I'm second. I, I watch the game, and if the game be low, I take the second half over. That's what I've been doing. In oh, that. yeah. That, that's a great That's smart. a great method. Let yeah, me speak on smart. that real quick. That's very Go smart, ahead. right? Um, so, guys, uh, I don't know if people pay attention to this trend, right? A trend when it comes to, you know, betting NBA action, usually it goes 50-50, right? A team might lose the first half, they win the second half. Mm-hmm. A team might win the first half, they lose the second half. It's the same with the over and under two, first half, second half. And the reason you see her like that is because Vegas won like a 50-50 split on where the money is going, mm-hmm. right? It's very rare that you see a team win the first half in the second half. You feel me? Like, it, it is rare, bro. Or you see a over cover the first half in the second half. The chances of that happening is very, very rare. Like, it fluctuates. It definitely. Yeah. So, the uh, the game is the Hawks versus the Magic. Mm-hmm. Second half, like the game was, it's not going to overweight like I needed to. But guess what though? What? Trey Young fight back. They go to overtime. Magic pull off. Now in any other game, bro, if I would have had the under, they filed to the last <laughs> second. <laughs> Trey Young got the ball at six seconds. He missed the shot. Nobody foul a motherfucker. They sit there and dribble it out. That shit like that make you turn the damn TV off. Because it's like, yeah. y'all know the shit. Bro, go by yeah. two points. But what? Because t- when you foul, now they go to the line. But what I told you, bro, over and under is the it's the easiest, the mo- yeah, line, to, it's the easiest yeah. line to to control as far as if you want to manipulate the game without it being so obvious. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because basketball, is, it's all about pace too, right? You can slow the game down with your style of pace. You feel me? If I'm a coach or somebody or whatever, I know if... These t- two teams are going to be playing at a fast pace. It's going to be a high scoring game, especially like the Pacers. Sometimes oh, yeah, they Pacers. come out different when them. If it be like at two sixty two, everybody done went under. Now oh, you see the now you oh, see yeah. them blazing. It's like <laughs> it like you watching the game at fast forward speed. Slow your head down, uh, hell of burn. I never feel Pacers, comfortable. Pacers Bucks. Anything over two fifty, I'm chancing. Right? Well, and so here is the psychology part that you got to look at um, when it comes to sports betting, right? Like the line makers know for a fact that if people see a line that's in the two fifties and two sixties, yeah. they're automatically going to think about the under. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So though, when you see those big lines, most people usually pay, play the under, and those lines usually cash, mm-hmm. right? So if you look at lines on NBA that are like 
260, 255. Indiana Pacers game. Yeah, those those Mm -hmm. lines cash more than 50%. Especially with Bucks and Pacers. Yeah, those lines cash more than 50% of the time. But human psychology, a lot of people see those lines. They're going to be more enticed to play the under. So this weekend, we got a wild card weekend. So with you, you looking for one play. You not looking at all the games and... Yeah, I'm looking... See. With the way I bet, bro, I just look for one play, man. I look for one play that I try to hammer, um, because I, my thing is, I'm I treat this like a business, mm-hmm. and I want to see my ROI at the end of the week or at the end of the month. I want to see how profitable I am. Kind of like same shit with Wall Street, right? What was your return on your investment? Gotcha. You you in Google? Okay, what's your return on Google for the year? Are you up thirty percent? Are you up sixty percent? When I look at sports betting, I treat it the same way, right? I want to see the return on my investment. So I just pick one game. Um, and it's going to be a lot of games. You got the Browns and the Texans. That's going to be a good game. You got the the Dolphins and the Chiefs, Steelers, Bills. I mean, I'm looking at the spread on that so game tell right me now. This, it's man. plus 10. Who, who, who yeah. plus 10 on what? Uh, Steelers the and the Bills. Bills. Ooh, plus that's 10 a, and a half. That's a, that's, that's, when that's, I just look at it, yeah. that's a juice spread. I don't think Bills should be a minus 10. Yeah. And then you know, over that's, under is 36. You it's 30, gotta, 30, weather, 30, weather gotta 36 and weather. a half. But that, that kind of fa- favors into Steelers as far as they style of play, though. Yeah. You know, Mike Tomlin, <laughs> no number no you know, ball. nobody game playing like Mike Tomlin, man. That's a, that's a great coach. He's one of my favorite coaches. Right. He's going to have them boys ready going into Buffalo. You know, they're going to. That's play. what Bud Dupree was just talking about. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at all those. So, man, I'm you. asking you this as a, like you, because you a business at this point. Do you watch? You got one play. Mm-hmm. Say, for instance, your play is the Dolphins versus Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Are you watching Houston versus the Browns at all? No, I'm watching the game that um, my play is on. Damn right. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 100, I'm 100% invested in the play um, that I got my money on, and I got uh, you know a whole bunch of other people you know yeah. telling too. Um, and the reason why, um, I like watching the games, bro, because when I'm watching the games, I'm looking at everything, right? If I'm watching basketball, I'm looking at their substitution or rotation, right? Uh, Lakers got a horrible sub rotation. Like, they coach got to do better. <laughs> Phoenix Suns, they substitution rotation is fucking trash. Sometimes I'd be night. like, yo, do these coaches, like, play video games? Because if you play video games, it kind of gives you an idea on certain lineups and changes. I don't know. I play video games, too. But I'm saying this to say, when I'm watching these games, man, I'm so invested. I pay attention to everything, like the rotation. Uh, how, how certain teams, what type of schemes they going to run, what type of coverage they going to play. Um, you know, are they going to come out running the ball strong? Like, did they struggle last game on offense? Because I know if a team in, in NFL, if a team scored less than 10 points, their focus the next game, they're going to try certain things different, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm more likely to p- play their um, over total, their team, team total points. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like the, uh, the, the Raiders. You seen what they did to the the the, the Chargers? Them niggas scored what zero or uh, three to five points. Came back, scored six in the next game. Yeah, right. and you just brought up the right. I'm glad you brought up. Is Antonio Pierce should he be their head coach? What y'all say? One hundred percent. I think so too. One hundred. He got them boys believing. They going out there fighting. They want to win. Yeah. Anybody right to ship in that type of situation needs a, a, a fair shot. A fair shot. At least give me one man. season. One, then, you know, the players respond to him. Mm-hmm. I think it's a you know open shirt case. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't uh, respect their mash coat, uh, their last coach. Yeah, McDaniel. Yeah. yeah. So uh, man, even on prize picks, if we mm-hmm. talking prize picks, are you watching each game? Like, if you got your players. Like uh, so I look, I or look you at, stay, you, or you kind of stay within one game with your players. No, no, no. With the player props, so I look at the player props a little differently, right? Uh, so sometimes when it comes to calling player props, I don't really gotta watch the games. You know, mm-hmm. I can look at the statistics. But when I'm looking at player props, certain things that I look at, you know, I look at guys who either been hot or guys that are been in, that has been in slumps, like cold slumps, right? Like for example, uh, I know you know last week Steph Curry was in a slump for like five games. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Um, and they play the Warriors. I play his. Uh, you no, know, they play the Nuggets. Uh, the game that Jokic hit that. Yeah, game winning three. You remember that game? I needed that boy. Yeah. I, had I, had Nuggets, I had Nuggets. I had Nuggets winning line on that game. Under. Oh, you had to say. <laughs> Because if they would have went to overtime, I was you done. Been I was done. Boy. Nigga, I, how he that's, screamed. That's saved you. How he screamed, I screamed. <laughs> I went around the house. We did it. <laughs> I hey, said we did it. It was it was so much riding on that three, though. Bro, that's for so much. Because it go into overtime, it's a wrap. Oh, it's a wrap, bro. It, it, it's, so it's look, a wrap. I'm glad you brought this. How do you feel about live betting? Live betting is a fucking cheat code. Talk to expand more, please. Yeah. 
Expand more. Yes, yes. <laughs> how, we listening to you, Guru. Oh, okay. I'm a Look, live better. Yes, live live bet is a fucking Chico, right? Um, here, here's what here's the thing about you know about live betting, right? So when you live bet and you're able to play a line at an advantage, um, at a better juice compared to what it was prior to the game. Now, depending on the sports that you're live betting, plays a factor. For example, I think the best sport to live bet on is NBA. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. and the reason why I say NBA is like a lot of people who bet. I don't really think they understand that NBA is really all about runs. Team make runs. A team is gonna have a ten zero run, a fifteen and five run. Another team is gonna have like it's all about runs. It's all about who make that final run to in the fourth quarter to you know seal the game. So when I say NBA live betting is a cheat code, meaning that let's say for example you got the Bucks and the Rockets, right? Mm-hmm. Bucks. I'm gonna give an example of a live bet I used the other day. Um, I played a live bet. So I had the Bucks and the Rockets, right? Bucks and the Rockets was playing. They were playing in Houston, right? Bucks was a huge favorite. Gotcha. They supposed to beat you no know, Dylan Brooks. You in Houston? What the fuck? So the line had the Bucks at minus seven and a half, right? To to win in Houston. Well, third quarter, them niggas was losing by eighteen. Right. Right, so the line went from Bucks need, needing to win by eight points. Plus. Now you can get Bucks plus money at plus eight and a half. Right now, I'm looking at the opportunity. I'm like, damn. So the books, if I would have, if I really liked the Bucks to win this game, now the books is offering them at plus eight and a half, and it's the and it's the third quarter. I know they're gonna make a run, run. even though they're yeah. losing by eighteen. Because I watch basketball, I understand basketball, I know they're going to make a run. So mm-hmm. that was a great value. So I threw like probably 5K on it, right? It wasn't nothing that much. So I, I, I threw 5K on it, Bucks plus eight and a half. And guess what? They only lost that game by four points. Four, four, either four or five points. Yeah, they came all the way. Yeah, because they, they, they made a run. They're going to make a run. You got Giannis, they're going to make a run. Because even like this, okay, man, I'm going to tell you this. Like a game like that, I see that you might just have a money line sheet. So, no, so I don't have a money line yeah, shit. I'm saying like I'm saying just people who gambling outside uh-huh. of the one play. So like you would see Bucks, you would see uh, the Celtics playing somebody. I think the Celtics lost the other day to somebody they should have beat. Indiana, Indiana. Indiana, Indiana. Yeah, so it's like oh, if you have people like that on money line, and then it's it's best to catch them live. Live, like yeah, bro. Because I, I I tell people, bro, if you're gonna play a money line, if you're gonna play a money line at minus two hundred. Nasty. And that team is losing in the first half Hedge. by eight points. Why the fuck would you not play that minus 110 now? They had them at minus 200 prior to the game. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't shy away from it because they are losing in the first half. Now yeah. is your chance to get good fucking value. Like a good example yeah. was um, the Celtics and the Pistons. Pistons were yes. blowing them out. Blowing them out. 20 plus points in the half. Oh, yeah. Perfect time to live. Correct. The live yeah. uh, money line was only at, but it was plus money, but plus one. 21 30 for them to win the game. It was minus fucking 700 Before prior the to the game. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, damn, bro, like minus 700. Now you can get them for a minus 110. Why the fuck would you not play? If you would have played it before the game, why the fuck would you not play it at an even Absolutely. better opportunity? So look, this weekend, they got Mike McCarthy versus the Packers. You got Tyreek versus Kansas City, Golf versus Stafford. You know, they made the trade. It's Do be you a good think game. any of those like personal. Personal stories outside Hollywood stories make any difference in like who you should go with. Um, Cause you were saying like sometimes it's a pride thing and all that. Yeah, I mean, like Stafford going back to Detroit. Should, should you look? Should you look into it too much? Um, I mean, he's gonna want to play well. I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. He's he's gonna want to play well. You're gonna have a motivational factor. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, you you do got to pay attention to that, but you don't want to pay attention to it too much. Meaning that. Probably use about ten percent motivational factor as far as you know you adding it into your research and reasoning for going with a certain play because gotcha. you don't want to look at it too much, bro. Because um, at the end of the day, those other guys on the other side are trying to win too. They don't give a fuck that you're coming in Detroit. Like, I don't care about that. <laughs> well, I, see, like, <laughs> I, I, I hear you breaking down your research by percentages. What is the heaviest percentage of you use for your research? Good, you think? <laughs> Good question. I would say um, the thing that I look at the most, man. Um, I look at trends, right? Meaning that, um, so when NBA, to, I'm going to use NBA as an example, and you can use this for NFL too, right? But NBA, because they play a lot of games, right? So with NBA, I try to find like five good teams, 
right? Five good teams that I know are very fucking good. And I just rotate and I try to look for trends, right? For example, if I see Nuggets are on a two game losing, a two game losing streak, the third game I start to pay attention to them because I'm like, look, they're on a two game losing streak. Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be a motivational factor in the third game. Mike Malone, you know, he's a very competitive guy. And also that team's a good team, right? They don't wanna lose three games in a row. So they're gonna play with a little bit more urgency, right? Then I look at a team like the Raptors, right? They're on like a five game losing streak, right? And it caught my attention. I'm like, damn, five game losing streak. Okay, you got Siakam, you got Scotty Barnes, you got Schroeder. This is not a bad team. They've just been losing games in the fourth quarter and they've lost five games. Okay, their next game, I'm going to pay attention to them. So I try to find teams and games that, you know, where I, there's a motivational factor, meaning that mm -hmm. this team have won three in a row or this team have lost five in a row or this team has lost three in a row because those games is – Nine times out, not nine times out of ten, but you are more likely to find better value because if a team has lost five games in a row, the books is going to adjust the the line on them. The books might have them at you know plus one ten compared to them really being a true minus one twenty right. mm -hmm. because they've lost five games right. in a row. Now they got them as an underdog in a right. game that they should really be the favorite. Right. You get what I'm saying? So you look at that type. Of yeah, stuff. yeah. So right now that you we mentioned basketball, they got NBA. Uh, they got Oklahoma City mm -hmm. right now being the number one team currently. So, in the West or in the league overall? In the, in the league West. overall. In the league overall? They, yeah. they got Oklahoma being number one? Yeah. So, like, you know, like, if you mm. put, like, teams they play, but what made oh, like them think power about... like, yeah, power, power rankings. Yeah, power rankings. Power rankings. Even though they're not number one yeah, in the West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But are. they, okay. Yeah, so... Analytics. With, with, yeah, with that being said, I remember it was a time in December. Uh, shout out to Chad Uber. He, he, he rocked with Chad Yo, uh, you had a play. OKC was uh, versus the Lakers. Mm -hmm. And I think it was uh, you did a first half money line. Mm -hmm. But the Lakers came out and they was winning like. You first scored it. Yeah, they was all like, oh, shit. Yeah, you thought, wait, you, you, you got the play? Did you yeah, get the play? You I was got like, oh, chat? shit. I was like, I'm <laughs> bad luck, bro. I'm bad luck. And out of nowhere, OKC started making a hot. run. Yeah. And walk that shit down and didn't look back. They didn't look back. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember. So I that's remember what that when game. you just said that, like with the live betting, like mm -hmm. don't shy away. How you, especially yeah. if you like him, right? If you was gonna play him, if you was gonna play him, you know, at a juice at a juice rate, just because they're losing by five or ten points in the four, in the first quarter, that doesn't mean shit, bro. Mm -hmm. Hey, bro, a ten point lead, fifteen point lead is not shit in the NBA, bro. But Thanks. you know, people get nervous, they get scared. But if you you know, compose yourself and you understand that this is a game about runs, you're going to always find good value. But I remember that game, bro. I remember that game. Um, sure. And the reason I even went with OKC first half, I just felt like, number one, I felt like they were the better team. But it was also one of those games where I felt like if the Lakers had a chance to win, it would be in the second half mm -hmm. type stuff, right? And I want to say they walked it down in the first quarter. They got it close. And then at the second yeah, quarter, they, just they took, yeah, 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 yeah. They um, just took off. Uh... Damn, I was gonna sure. say the I'm Clip here looking at spreads of the NBA games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clippers, <laughs> go, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes when they say like, I don't know, like uh, in church, sometimes the spirit just move you. Like, <laughs> and and the day the spirit just moving us. To, <laughs> this might be helping somebody watching this right now. Nah, yeah. facts, facts, yeah, bro. Facts. You, you might say somebody life watching nah, this. Nah, facts. Yeah, facts. like knowing how to manage their bankroll and all that. Facts. So, like the Clippers versus the uh, Lakers the other day. Uh huh. So the Clippers was favored. Yeah, the people. Lakers won. Mm -hmm. Come back. Clippers play the Phoenix the next night. Then you look at the spread. You like, shit. They just lost to the Lakers. Ain't mm -hmm. no way they finna block. And they. They blew them out. They blew them out the water. Yeah. So I'm looking at stuff like that. I'm like, bro, it's some. I don't think. I don't think. Is. Um, I don't think the Suns had KD that game. They did. Yeah, they had him. Yeah, he, had, he, had he played that game. Yeah, they don't bro. play well together, bro. Really? What, they Bill don't Bill miss at all. And uh, what the Booker? Suns? Yes. I, I can tell you what the Suns' problem is. What? I'll tell you right now. So the problem with the Suns, man. Um, number one, they play too much ISO. They play too much ISO ball. Mm -hmm. Um, their offense is very predictable. Meaning that uh, they they gonna do a couple of things, right? You gonna have number one. Why is Devin Booker even playing point guard? Get a fucking Damn, point guard. Who said that? Devin Booker Dom is a, 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 a two. He's a killer two. Now you have him playing point guard, bringing the ball up. He's uh, doing too much. Doing thinking, too much. Got to make sure people in their spot. Right. right. Like I could facilitate, but I don't want to be the facilitator. He, he, he shouldn't the whole be the game. facilitator, right? Yeah. And it's like when Booker have the ball at the top of the key. Where's KD? He's in the corner. 
Where's Bill? Bill's in the corner, right? Your offense is too predictable, right? KD should not be standing in the corner. Have KD in, at, at the mid post. Have KD in the pick and roll with Booker. Well, he nasty. Right. Man. Or Bill, have Bill running some back door. Why is Bill being a spot-up shooter, right? So when I look at the Suns team, man, that's a bad team. Frank Vogel, I'm going to be honest with you. If they don't pick it up, I won't be surprised if he gets fired. Me at season. That's oh, crazy. Sure. Yeah, Frank. You Frank, from Jacksonville? How you feel? Jacksonville, about Florida. Yeah, Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. But you, you never was a Jaguars fan. Um, I, I was a Jaguar fans when they had a, you know, a Fred Taylor. Um, you know, back in the day when I was growing up. And oh, stuff. Mark Brunel. Yeah. Mark Brunel, yeah. Jimmy mm -hmm. Smith. Yes, yeah, all them guys. Yeah. Um, but nah, man, Jackson, I'm not really a Jack. Like Trevor Lawrence, man, you know. So it don't you don't feel no type of way that, that what they did Sunday. Nah, I, I, I wasn't surprised. Tennessee matched up well with the Jags. Mm. They were also really struggling, like what, one and five, their last six. Yeah. Um, everybody expected them to win that game in Tennessee, but you you know, you gotta look at the you gotta look at the record. Them boys been struggling. Jacksonville been struggling to end the season. They were eight and three at one point. John Morant out for the season with a tear in his shoulder. I mean, yeah. they ain't hurt nothing though. They they not making they the playoffs. Yeah, they, 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 they it's but, actually better for them. But I'm gonna tell tonight. you this: when John Morant came back, you see yeah. he is an exciting motherfucker, and you want to keep him in the league. 100. Don't suspend him again. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what he show on that phone. Please. He can have a motherfucking bomb in his hand. If he don't pull the motherfucking <laughs> pin out that bit, let him play. Yeah, Bro, let, let Ja he's play. He's exciting. We don't know. Uh, Wimby? Yeah, Wimby. Yeah, and Wimby. Hey, Wimby. I'm going to tell you this. Wimby is going to be in the league for a long time, too. Wimby play when he want to play. When he played against the Bucks, he showed a Wimby. You, I'm, that was his I don't get, that's his best game It was on by his birthday. Far. Yeah, yeah, uh, but he was going was, against the Giannis. Giannis, he had twenty seven. I think he had twenty seven and ten or twenty seven and twelve. That was to me, that was his best game as a professional. Yeah, Wimby's yeah. gonna be the best player in the league within five years. You could count. I think. It? I think three to five years max. Still. If he can stay, if he can stay healthy, where's uh, SGA gonna go? I think Wimby's gonna be more valuable than SGA. Shit, I don't know. He, he should a, be. He Wim, 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 he's he's seven six. He yeah, man. Yeah, he, he's seven he, tall. He's, seven, he's supposed yeah. to. He's yeah. supposed to be there. He guy. impacts the game. He's gonna be able to impact the game on them. Shit, LeBron might still be in the league. Hey, you go with that shit. I don't know. Draymond said. said he he considered retirement, but he back with the Warriors. He said it was too much. It was too much. Nigga, what? How you come that playing victim, bro? Yeah, that's but bro, it's you, nasty. you playing victim at this point, bro. Like they simply told you don't punch niggas, bro. Yeah. Like <laughs> what's man. too much about you just playing basketball? This man, man got a technical foul highlight reel. Yeah, I ain't never seen. It's I don't know too, too many much. people. I can't like that, whoop bro. a nigga ass when I feel man. like. Yeah, that was some that was some victim playing shit. Man. I seen that. I'm like, yeah, Draymond tripping, bro. You can't come back as the victim, bro. Shout out my boy Greg. His team is rolling. He a Clippers fan. The Clippers. I think the Clippers are starting to get it clicking. I think I think they're gonna do something. You but I will say this: CJ Stroud is the rookie of the year, hands down. Oh, one hundred percent. I hope so. One, he ran. I mean, they sealed that up. You hope so. Appreciate who, who, you. Else, who else would it be? I mean, somebody was talking about a receiver in LA. Puka I'm not gonna Nakua. mention any names, but uh, Puka. Yeah. Nah. Exactly. Hell. I mean, that was fuck my no. reaction as well. Yeah, I wouldn't say fuck no. I, I'll say fuck no. It's, it's CJ. Man, no, no, give up all this. It's CJ. one hundred percent. Zero, zero chance. Yeah. It's, Puka's do you know awesome. what unanimous means? You what? <laughs> unanimous. <laughs> unanimous. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> it's certain words. But look, I tell you this, I don't say all this shit correct, <laughs> but I can spell like a motherfucker. Nah. <laughs> but I nah, spell it should. how it's spelled. But nah, he should he should be the rookie of the year um one hundred percent, man. If you look at what he's done with that team, um, especially with them, you know, being off of Deshaun Watson, a first year hair coach, um, what's his name? Uh DeMar DeMarco. DeMarco Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, DeMico yeah. Ryan's oh, Ryan. Yeah. Ryan. 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 Ryan coach, man. Hey, but you, hey, look, so man, I gotta ask you this yes. before we move on to highlights and low light. Do you put Cause I know you are a business. Do race come into to play with you? Um, as far as like when you say race, man, I ain't finna be. No, 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 no. Yeah, like, oh, like, uh, nah, not not really, bro. Not really. Um, nah, I'll say no because I just look at you know who I think gonna have the best chance. Of yeah. Winning. Like for example, uh, like my favorite player is Jokic. Shit, mine too. With, with the with the Nuggets because I. I 
that's a guy where when I have my money on him, I feel so secure, bro, because he plays the game the right the way. The whole like time. Playing? Yeah. No, like just for on his the, team to win. Gotcha. Yeah, bro, he plays the right way. I'm going to tell you this before we get out of here. That last, it was one game, he, they was kept giving him foul. He had like 16 assists, for, but the refs start fucking with him. Like they would give him silly fouls silly off the fouls. screens yeah. and shit like that. He would look and he was like, what? Like, fuck. like with even, I like this nigga because he like, Joker look like he be about to slap a referee like nah, on some he does. shit. Like, you know how <laughs> what Draymond doing, Joker look like he ain't gonna stop. Like once he get his hand yeah, around yeah, yeah. one of them referee neck, <laughs> he doing all that. Yeah, to yeah, the he, he play with a fire, man. Yeah. He, he's a he, he's a guy. I like guys who play with fire, and I I like guys who are competitive. Jokic, Giannis. I'm never gonna question their effort. Give me some NFL players like that, so we can know going into this. As season. far as guys <laughs> effort yeah, that yeah. I can't um ba- I Baker May- Mayfield. What? I mean, I know, <laughs> Come I, on, I, no, no, listen, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. As far as like from a competitive standpoint, what? guys, I I know people make fun of Baker, but he's a very competitive guy. Very like, competitive. He, who else? You he got? goes. I like. Baker. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, okay. uh, I would say Baker. Um, I like uh, Debo Samuel. Nigga, that's who there I was waiting for. You Debo to say. Samuel. Debo motherfucker. Debo Samuel. Yeah, Debo's a, Debo's a, a a fucking game changer, bro. Like yeah. this guy can single handedly like. Growing the whole defense. Debo, so I like Debo Samuels a lot. Um, I like um I like Jalen Hurts. I think he's gonna I think he's oh, gonna, he gonna have get a good he's gonna get yeah. it together, you know. Like I know Eagles ain't in the season how they want um wanted to end, but I think Jalen Hurts is gonna have a breakout game. You can get it together mm. in the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah. When you got a team like the Eagles, yeah. Okay. Bro, it's, it's, it's it, nothing for them to get that. It's, it's nothing at all. It's hard bro. to win it all when you're falling into the playoffs. So it's losing and losing and losing and losing. I, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. So, um, man, while we got you here, man. Yes, sir. Uh, and we need you here. Yes. Okay. Because yes. we've been we've been doing uh, been a tough year so far, better. Horrible on prize picks. Prize so, picks. So usually every week we 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 go around the room. We get, okay. We get picks together. Okay. Okay. And not that you you know what I'm saying because you are a business. Yes. We yes. gonna tell you like some of our picks. You can okay. join in if you if you choose to. Okay. But we gonna say some of our picks. If you hear some shit that ain't good, talk us out of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is this gonna be for NFL? Or Mostly NFL. Okay. 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 Let yeah. Me, so not NFL for sure. I'm going C.J. Stroud, 245 and a half passing yards against the Browns. I know the Browns have a great defense. I'm sure of that. But I feel like he going to be throwing that motherfucking ball. Browns, Browns do have a great defense, bro. That pass rush is something serious. Didn't they just play the Browns recently, too? Um, I'm uh, going to stay in the same game. I'm going Joe Flacco under 270. I was gonna say over there, man. What for real? They got yeah. Flacco juice. What? Dude, 270. Hey, bro, but did you see what Texas defense just did to Minshew? Here's the thing, he, Flacco. Look, look, look they at just Fla- played against one. But look, look at Flacco, Flacco last. Had four, points. Look at Flacco last four games, though, right? And, and this is crazy because when I look at his last four game, he threw for over 300 yards in every single one of those. He games. did 368 he, against Houston. He, 368, 374, 311, 309. But the books got him at 270. Right? Mm-hmm. That's about a. That's about a 40. 40 yards disparity. It's a red right flag. When you average his last four compared to what the books has him at right now. So with it being that low, it has to be that low for a reason. Talk to him. Okay. That's how I look at it, right? No. I don't want to be one of those fools where it's like, damn, Flacco threw for 309, 368, 374, 331, but the books got him at 270. That's a steal. Calm down. They got him at 274 a reason. We going left. Look, you talk about them trends and everything, right? Flacco just came back playing. So everybody know they don't know what Flacco could do. They don't know what, hey, what to look right, for. The the tennis. They're gonna run That's that the ball. first round of the They're they, they gonna run it. I like I like the under on Flacco. Okay. I know I know it looks sweet when you look at his last four, but I like I like the under. I so think. tell me this before I lock in minds. Mm-hmm. With, with, should I go CJ Stroud or Pat Mahomes? Pat Mahomes going against a Miami defense, but they in the cold. I want to go less because I feel like they're going to be doing a lot of screens and a lot of runs. Well, I'll say this. Um, I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Um, I'm going over. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> it, with it being a high-scoring game, if one team, you know, start losing, they're going to start airing that bitch out. Yes. You dig what I'm saying? Um, I I like the over. 
I okay. think Pat Mahomes is going to try to have a good game too because, you know, p- the media been talking about Pat Mahomes saying, you oh, know, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, he paid attention time. to that. Yeah, yeah. That? He watched that. Yeah, he watched that. I think it might be shit. snowing there this weekend. He, he, he watched that yeah. shit. 254, though. I, 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 like, I, like, I like the over. Yvette, who Mahomes. your pick? Uh, Aaron Rodgers, the over on the Chargers. Running back for the Rams, right? Mm. Solid pick. How over you feel 85? about that, man? Let's see. Let's see. Over, over 85.5. Where is it at? And they going against Detroit. At Detroit. Yeah. Uh, Detroit, Detroit, Detroit uh defense on the run, bro. It's, it's not the best. Um <laughs> it's not it's not the best at all. Um honestly, me personally, I, I won't play that. I won't play that play. Just me personally, I won't play that game. As far as for the run. No, like I would feel yeah. I because I don't want to ask because it's so iffy. I don't want to answer that. Like me personally, I won't play that. If I was to play a play on that game, I would probably feel more confident playing the quarterback play. As far as you know, Stafford and golf, um, you know I really like um, staff or uh, Stafford pass over on that game because I feel like Detroit is going to be a high scoring game too. I don't see this game being a low scoring game at all, um, like zero chances of a low scoring game. What's your pick, Marcel? Stafford. Stafford over <laughs> over, over passing. Yeah, I, I really like man, Stafford you, over you on just passing. Just heard over. him say that. Shit. Nah, <laughs> shit, I'm looking to the ring. Man. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really like that. They're going to air that shit out. What you got, Greg? Thad, you got one? Jalen Hurts. Well, for his uh, pass, what is his pass at? 237. Yeah. They play in Tampa Bay, 55, 167, 301. I mean, it, j- just looking at this, um, I will probably play the under, under Hurts. Um, just because of the simple fact that he has been struggling throwing the football. They have been th- uh, turning the ball over a lot, too. Um, I think this game against Tampa, they're going to try to establish the run. Mm-hmm. Any um, injured you know, hands. Yeah, with, with Swift. I think they're going to establish the run with Swift. Um, and I don't think Jalen Hurts is going to take a lot of deep chances because Tampa Bay has a really good defense, too, bro. Okay. People have been sleeping on Tampa. But that 237, he hasn't thrown for over 200 yards uh, in four of his last And they five run games. a lot. They you run a lot. Yeah. Him and the running, they run right. back and, court. A, and another thing, too, to look at that game, Tampa Bay, um, they're going to run, Tampa Bay is going to run the football. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't expect this to be a high scoring game. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So when I look at that, you know, Tampa running the football, Hurts been struggling throwing the football. Eagles, mm-hmm. they know their best chances to win is underground. I think it's going to be a low scoring game. The line's at Hurst 44. Gonna, 44. If I play a if I play an over and under on that line, I'll probably play at uh minus 47 and a half. Okay. So I will buy like three points. Yeah, we need one more. What? Uh let's see over here. Um Yeah, throw us one, man. Let's see. Yo, it gotta be NFL? No. Nah, or it nah. could be NBA. It could be. It can be NBA, Anything. okay. All right, let's see over here. I'm gonna throw an NBA. I want to throw an NBA on there tonight. Uh, Killian Murray. Mm, we ain't gonna fuck with him. This shit is at 15. Malik Monk, Ben. Struggle against New Orleans. Malik Monk, uh, Gillian Hayes. I'm just seeing how quick he analyzed that Jeremy shit. Jeremy Grant. Jalen Bronson. Julius Randle been balling for the Knicks, and they got him at like 28. A and he's been balling like a like a mug. Uh, uh, yeah, OG looking good with them. I would say I, I would say this. Um, here's a play that I really like. I like um, Marcus Smart over on points. Okay. What's the point? Let's see. Do they have Marcus Smart? Ah, they don't have him. Of course they don't. <laughs> they don't got him. Of course they don't. I know exactly you know, right. balling. No yeah. boy hurt. Yeah. They don't have Damn. him, man. Jai, yeah. Because Marcus Smart is one of those Damn. guys. Like he's gonna he's gonna put up the shots. Um, I like. I tell you this. I like this. I like Scotty Barnes. Tonight against the Lakers, 19 and a half. Okay. I like Scotty, 19. Um, Scotty Barnes, a player that also has really taken like the next step into his game this season. So shout out to that boy, Scotty Barnes. He really worked on his jump shot. Scotty Barnes is a really, really good player. And I feel like a lot of people don't really watch, um, you know, the Raptors right. play like right. that. Mm-hmm. But so they don't be known. Yeah, Scotty Barnes, man, he's a stud, bro. He's. He, I'm going to tell you another thing, man, that people don't watch the Raptors enough to know. Last year, uh, Pascal Siakam, is a turnover machine. 
Yeah, because he, he he was trying to do a little too yeah, much. Yeah, a lot of offensive yeah. fouls and stuff like that. That they don't stop putting people like uh, Greek Freak for uh, turnovers. Yeah. Oh, they started. They don't stop. Oh, they stopped. Yeah, yeah, because you know this guy high high usage. Yeah, they yeah, and the high, high usage, usage they know it's gonna be turnovers. Mm-hmm. Now they've been trying Luca like that. Yeah. And I well, I mean Luca has the highest usage in uh, in the NBA. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He, they they use him the most. Yeah. But no, nah, I definitely feel like the insight you brought with us this uh, this episode was dope. Was well needed. Very informative. Gonna yeah. tap in. Yeah, for nah, sure. Nah, I'm excited, man. Sure. I get excited. Like I said, I get excited about man, talking you know about when stuff I knew like you this. was in a different, um, like a different tax bracket? <laughs> nah, because I'm saying, they, people don't know this, bro. You used to have, like, a, you could get your plays for like a month. Yeah. Yeah. I did. That shit stopped. <laughs> That nigga only do exclusive <laughs> one thing. I said, oh, this nigga ain't the same. <laughs> I did. I did used to have it. You right. That's I did. Hard, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for sure. You would do baseball and all that. Mm-hmm. Shit. Was like, nah, yeah. I buy pictures. Oh, you like season. baseball? I love baseball. I love baseball, Can't bro. Can't wait. Yeah, I love, I fucking love baseball. One so, question before you get out of here, yes, bro. Sir. So I'm circling back to where we first started. Mm-hmm. You talked about, you know, you're running up in a casino on site. And they'll start li- to limit you and everything mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Hard Rock only been open. They just opened that shit up a month ago mm-hmm. where you could bet, right? Right, right, right. How they treat you when you start running up the bank? Well, I was I was using their app, right? Uh, so the app the app came first before the actual, you know, sports book. Right. But um, when I was using the app, like I said, I was able to bet, you know, 20K. That's how I was able to, like, run it up, like, really, right. really quick. Um, then, you know, after I, I kept running it up and I tried to withdraw... They limited me as far as like the amount I'm able to bet on the play. So via app, you know they can look at your user profile, Absolutely. right? Because at the end of the day, it's a business decision, right? Yeah. If you see somebody running it up, of course you're gonna limit that person. That's crazy. And I just figure it's not worth my time betting 2,500 because it's gonna take so long for me to, you know, get, get to where I want to get, yeah. you know, to build up. I'm like, you play blackjack? I don't. The only thing I gamble on, bro, 100% God truth, bro, is sports. So. T- with, you know, like some I don't so cars, none of that. <laughs> damn, I I know I've been saying that's the last question, but it's like so you don't you're this really a business for you know like certain people they got to gamble on anything and everything. I'm not like that. Yeah, I could tell. Yeah, I'm not like that at all. So if you go to the casino, you put your sports bet and you can walk out. Yeah. I, man, seeing that blackjack table, like yeah. man, let me try a hand. Yeah. Yeah. Say ROI. When anybody say ROI, yeah, that's their business. Yeah, rollover investment. Yeah. Just, just sports betting, bro. Like, um, and what's so crazy? Fuck about it, man. I'm gonna interrupt you. <laughs> Tell us one story where, like, you lost a lot of money. and You were like, God damn. Ooh, Ooh, and it was a bet. You like, listen, <laughs> listen. I already, I already got it, cuz. And you know, I, I keep it very. You know, oh no, being I honest, knew you were right? gonna keep it one hundred. That's why. I oh asked. man, this, bro, this was the worst beat of my fucking life, bro. I'm gonna tell you about the shit, right? So, I bet a hundred thousand, right? Uh-huh. And I did a two leg parlay. What year is this? This was this year. Damn, this already. Twenty twenty three or twenty twenty four? No, twenty twenty three. Oh, I was gonna say. My bad. Damn. <laughs> it, was in, it was it was in December. It was oh. it was in December. It was it was twenty twenty three in December, right? Uh-huh. So my two leg play, I had the the Nuggets, right? They played Atlanta. I had the Nuggets, and I had the Dolphins against the the Titans, right? Oh. On that Monday night game. Yeah. Monday night. night. Big dog, the okay. first, bro, I bet 100K to win 100K, so it was even money, right? I was going to win 200K. The Nuggets and the Hawks play, blowout, easy, right? Miami was like minus fucking nine, like a, a crazy- It's the Monday night game because yeah, the Giants played, yeah. bro, a crazy I was fuck, bro, a crazy I was... fucking minus. I was like, look, I know Dolphins going to win this game. I'm, I'm going to play Dolphins minus two and a half, right? Miami was up by two scores. I remember. Two, five minutes. No, it was less, three, than, three, less than five. It was three minutes, minutes left. Than, yeah. Right. ESPN showed the record. Teams that had a two score lead with three minutes left was seven hundred and sixty eight and zero. Shit. Now I'm why I got my two hundred dollar ticket. Dolphins up ten. Less than three minutes left. Nigga, I'm celebrating. Nigga, I called my assistant. Hey kid, we just cashed a big play. You filming big day tomorrow? You feel me? <laughs> my my nigga, my, my, a couple of my niggas, right? Yo, F and B, bro, what the fuck? You yeah. go woo de woo woo de woo. Listen, man, fucking Tennessee got the ball back, bro. Down fucking ten, bro. They scored a touchdown in thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. 
Dolphins got the ball. Three and out. Three and out. <clears throat> Punt. Tennessee got the ball. Drove that bitch. Another score. Game over. 200K. Gone. And you had counted it. All right, yeah. You know a lot of times I, I, I had that, an under on that game. Money. You know what I do sometimes though, bro? And I stop doing that shit because <laughs> we in we in gambling chats, you feel me? So we screenshot. Yeah. So I don't send that shit until it's cash. Until it's cash. Bro. Facts. You know, you I don't need screenshot no more. Hey. Yeah. Bro, you gotta screenshot stop screenshot no yeah, too. Screen yeah. Don't even do the shit. Like Sorry. I'll show you niggas when I, I go exactly. to the graded way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to show pennies. Uh <laughs> Nigga, I screenshot some shit. I was sending the chat. I was like, came back for everything they took. Nigga, <laughs> I'm just looking. Motherfuckers start shooting threes for no reason. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so, like, you know, the kids start talking, not questioning. Hey, just, everybody wait a minute. Because this game was not even close. They was up 15. These niggas done shot 3-3. Three, three. Now they think they can fire. Stop! <laughs> now this shit just going, going, going. Niggas start sweating around. <laughs> bro, yo, hold. Bro, people it don't realize. It your move, bro. bro. Yeah. It does. You gotta go to the I was at that casino, bro. And mind you, the casino I went to, it was a two-hour drive, bro. Ooh, it was long. Yeah. So I, I had my driver, bro. So imagine leaving the casino at 1 a.m., bro. And you just watch your two, like 200 cages. The, the shit had a 99.9% .9 chance of cashing. Oh, cash my God. Not, bro, teams that were winning by 10 points or more with three minutes left in NFL was 768 and 0. Mm. Seven, nigga, that ride back. You know what? Like, I'm very, like, I was mad, bro, but I was like, you know what? That's the betting, guys. You know what I'm saying? But, bro, that ride home in the car with my driver, bro, nigga, we just over there just... Quiet for two hours. Yeah, don't nobody need to say Quiet that. For we two know, hours. we know the atmosphere. Like you they, know what they, I'm talking. Yeah, Dang. don't even say shit. Yeah. Then I got back to the crib, man. My girl, she like, how the game go, babe? And that shit made me so mad, bro. Yeah, like that shit. Made me so what you know? Mad. What made you just ask some stupid shit like that? <laughs> Yo. That shit made me so yeah. mad, cuz. Like, bro, I just looked at her. I was like, I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. Man, sometime after a bad beat, and Reggie and Marcel, y'all could test that. That sleep be a different type of sleep. Man, when no you sleep. lay your oh. ass down. That ain't no you, sleep. You can't sleep after you don't got your no ass up. Bro, I sleep. I, I, don't, I ain't got no choice but to sleep. I can't do shit else. <laughs> that be some of the best sleep you could get after you done got your ass Thanks. wrong. <laughs> Facts. You lay down, man. You wake up late. <laughs> Listen, nah, facts. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you another one, bro. I lost so bad this one time, bro. I got sick, like real sick. <laughs> you ever, bro? You ever lost so bad, bro? You just got sick that night. My, I was like, my girl was like, babe, what's wrong? I was like, I don't feel good, cause I lost so I got bad. The <laughs> yeah, that's that's the other tax bracket shit right there, bro. I ain't for I don't be that bad. Man, I, I listen, don't feel sick, bro. But I, ain't I, feel I, I keep it pee, bro. Like I, I don't man, lost so bad, bro. I'd be I was sick with two hundred, bro. bro. Especially when it be it close. Just fucked up my head. Yeah, it like, just fucked up your whole mood, bro. Like I don't want to go out to eat, bro. That's real. Like, listen, I'm. Bro, I, I I got I caught a cold, bro. Like I, I was in Miami too, fam. I can believe that. But I lo I, I took such a bad beat that day, bro. Like I got cold, bro. Like I was sick that night, for real. Like I was sick for a couple of days, and I was like, damn. I really made myself sick. Right? Sure. It's crazy. Man, and where they can find you at, like if they want to get in touch and you know, like yeah, 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 yeah. Network, yeah. get into the uh nah, man. You had, um, they had one question for you. Yes, yeah, sir, yes, yeah, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, good question, man. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the spread real quick. So, a lot of people, when you see a plus by a number, for example, if you see a plus five, you know, people who are new to sports bet and they think like, oh, plus five, that means the team have to win by five. No, that's not what it means. It means the opposite, right? Um, so just think about the plus and minus. That's the opposite. So the opposite, the plus doesn't mean that the team have to win by five. It means that they cannot lose by more than five. And the minus is they have to win by, they have to cover. So they have to minus cover. So just think about the opposite um, when you're looking at that. Then when you see like a, a a plus money, if it's like plus 100, that means that you would need to bet $100 to win 100. When it's minus 120, that means you have to bet $120 to win 100, right? So 
just rewatch this when they produce it, right? And just go back to it and just replay. Okay, plus means opposite. You feel me? Um, so when you see uh, plus on a spread, meaning that plus eight or plus nine, plus three, meaning that how many points the team has to cover by, plus simply means that they cannot lose by that many amount of points. And some of y'all, y'all plus. just got to know math, too. Yeah, just like, basic yeah, fucking right. math, too. Bro. That was a lot of them niggas motherfuckers be, be niggas fucking be dumb up. sometimes, bro. Bro, so bro, all you be dumb sometimes, bro. I'll be like, God damn, and bro, how does what's that What's so make good sense? about this show? We got a lot of women who watch this show. And oh, yeah, I love, and, I love my female gamblers. Oh, man. That, I love hey, them. bro, that's a turn. <laughs> I love my Bro, that's gamblers. a turn on. Yeah, bro. I love my female man, gamblers, this, bro. Uh, oh, man, my baby mama yeah. watch this shit. I love my female gamblers, bro. I got a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and it, Girl, it ain't really nothing like that. We don't, we don't talk outside. Yeah, yeah. But she be sending me her prize pick, like her uh, look. Her slip. Yeah, her slip. Yeah. I be like, man, girl, <laughs> you, you crazy, girl. <laughs> On that note, man, man, is let them know your IG, where they can reach you at, man. And- yeah, uh, you can check me out uh, on Instagram, uh, Fort Manny Bets, uh, F O R T M A N N Y B E T S, Fort Manny Bets. Be careful because there's a lot of fake pages out there too, man. Uh, I'm only on IG and I'll never message you first. You feel me? <laughs> that's, what you talking that, about? that's number one, bro. I will never message you first, bro. So don't. <laughs> Nigga don't ain't go. looking for no help. <laughs> you feel me? So yeah, so that that's how you gonna know that you you got the official me, man. Hey, so, yeah, so four minutes. Hey man, are out. you cool or or anybody else uh in the gambling field or or the sports betting field that you like? That you like, you know, rock with. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got my young nigga in Florida, man. Uh, Vaughn, um, Vaughn. Uh, his name is Vaughn. Vaughn Five. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a young kid. He's 21, 22. Um, and I really like what he's doing. Yeah, you, he, you look at. Yeah, him like he reminds him. me of myself. Yeah, man. that's like, love, he a young bro. Nigga, man. Uh-huh. He and you don't look shit. at him like, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I don't hate. I would never have a beef with another capper, bro. Because at the end of the day, bro, we fighting against the books, bro. I don't, you feel me? That's I'm not, what fight, niggas don't I'm not fighting against you, bro. How the fuck do you not want me to win, bro? Like, bro. you want the sports books to fucking win that's fucking trying to take your money, my nigga? Like, your beef is not with me. Mm-hmm. So when other cappers be hating on me or whatever and be saying, I'm like, look, when you winning a lot in life, bro, you're going to have haters. And when you have haters, yeah. it's how you know you popping. So bro, I embrace man. that shit. This on some shit like, bro, this been a good ass episode. This some shit like, it be at the house sometimes if my dog done bet it. 500 on a play, even if I like the other team, I'm not gonna bet against you. Type shit. Yeah, that's what type of shit I'm type on. Cause shit. like, I'm just not gonna speak on it. I don't I wanna yeah, be no, yeah. no type dude. shit. That's why I, man, my, I got a cousin. Niggas be haters, bro. I'm telling you. Niggas I got a haters. cousin, he bet petty shit. He got a $15 bet on a six leg. <laughs> like, oh, that's, cuz. That's numbers, bro. Don't look at my shit. <laughs> Talking about you need somebody. That shit ain't nothing. <laughs> I done bet it real money on one. Like, let my shit hit. Yeah. Cause I will give you $15. Yeah. Don't be sitting there nah. watching the TV. God damn, we drop. Yeah. Yeah. Shut, Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, cuz. Like, what oh, you, what's, your, what's your real objective here, cuz? Shut the yeah. fuck up. Let my shit hit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nigga, you got a lottery ticket over there, nigga. For real. I got some sure bets. I call them shits, bro. I call them shits Hill Mary parlays, man. And look. A lot of niggas go broke playing parlays, man, and mm-hmm. it, it, it's really Have you sad, ever hit bro. a Mary parlay? Have I ever hit one? Mm-hmm. Um, I came close. Um, this was in 2000, 2012, bro. I had $1,000 on a 10 leg, bro. Just trying some shit? Yeah, the hit for 83000 It came short Good. by the Detroit Lions. It, it missed by it missed by like two like Ooh. two points. They lost by Damn. a hit. Um, But it was going to pay. But when I look at it, bro. Look at But just tell you how God worked. Then you bet a thousand dollars for a hail mary play. Now you bet a hundred thousand every day. Yeah, because you know that thousand compared to hundred. That's only one percent. Yeah, you feel me? So like, I can bet a thousand on a big ass parlay and not give a fuck. Yeah. Like when I bet those hail mary parlays, bro, I don't honestly, I don't give a fuck about them. Right? You don't it's even like, check them. If it hit cool, if it don't hit cool, like I know niggas, bro, who will come to me, bro, and they'll send me their ticket. Right? They got a little fifty dollars on a little eight leg, and niggas be sweating like, bro. You think it's going? It's like, bro, it's an eight leg, my nigga. Yeah. Why are you sweating? The, the odds and probability of you hitting the eight legs is less than four percent. Cause I want to win. Yeah, the, it's less than four percent. Less than four percent. The odds of hitting the eight leg parlay is less than four percent. When you have a single, that's 50-50. 
when you add another one, you go from 50-50 to 30, uh, 33%. Like it kind of split, right? Mm-hmm. And then you add another one. Simple math, bro. Mm-hmm. Odds and probability and you break it down. So you feel me? I be telling niggas, man, stop playing them Hill Mary parlays, bro. That's the quickest way to go broke. You feel yeah. me? You got to have Especially don't put no big money. If you could spare, yeah. do yeah, a little something like on the house. side. Yeah, you can, do a, little, you can do a little something, bro. A but... dollar. Yeah, fan little shit's a... <laughs> hey man, I hope you've been. Playing, they put dollars on it. I hope you, I hope you've been enjoying this episode. Uh, shout out to Manny Cortez coming through, fucking with yes, man. Sir. Make yes, sure you sir. follow him on IG. Fort Manny. Man. I, I didn't mean to be rude to you, but if a nigga here talking a hundred thousand, you talking about a dollar on fan? Like don't, don't disrespect, man, don't bro. disrespect this nigga. And don't disrespect this show, man. Shout out to Reggie Ball and this motherfucker. Man, keep tuning in to Broken Play. <laughs> man, hope you learned something. <laughs> mute when you see Marcel talk. Mute. <laughs> and then unmute when you see us talk. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, man, we are. Uh, they be putting a dollar to...